God allows those moments to happen to really put us on the path that we need to, to, to allow us to enter the next chapter that we need to enter. Maybe God is writing something that's far better than what you were planning on writing. Every time I'm having a bad day, I just think without my bad days, I would not appreciate my good days. Hey, Paula, thanks so much for talking with us today. Hey there, Kirk. It's an honor to be with you. And I love Candace. You love, we both love <laughs> Candace. <laughs> I have to, I mean, I don't know how this interview is going to go, but I'm assuming like she, she's probably going to be my favorite Cameron, but I, I can't, <laughs> I, I can't vouch for that because we haven't had this conversation yet. Yeah, so no, it depends. I, you guys can jockey for that position. I think that's a good bet. I, I think that's a good bet. <laughs> and, and I can just imagine uh, just, uh, you guys were like sisters on that show, I'm sure. I'm sure there oh. were, were lots of moments. So many stories were told. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have hearts of courage and compassion. And sometimes uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to be in situations like that where yes. people are in such different views. So uh, thanks for all the good work that you did there. Oh, of course, we walk through the fire together, and I think that's one reason why Candace and I, we have something that will forever bond us that very few people can ever experience. And I think that has just really sealed our relationship. We are sisters for life because of that. Well, you, you know, you more than many other people know the power of stories. Stories are in music, stories are in movies, right. stories are in books. We love stories. Jesus told parables and he told stories. And, and I can think of stories in my past that have made a big difference to me. You know, I'm, I've, I've chosen to go into a line of work where I'm telling stories through acting roles, through movies. And right, those right. movies, can make a difference in people's lives. And that Absolutely. feels like a great honor to be a part of that. Um, what, what caused you to make the career choice to want to tell stories to the world that impact them? Well, um, you know, people ask me this, did, did I grow up idolizing Barbara Walters or Connie Chung or Diane Sawyer and wanting mm. to be a broadcaster? And no, I didn't even know it was a possibility. Honestly, Kirk, you know, I grew up in a small town, Jackson, Michigan, cornfield in my backyard. I didn't know to even dream for something like that. It wasn't until my high school drama teacher, Mr. Barsoon, <laughs> he, he's the one that first kind of planted that seed. He said, Paula, you're really curious and you like to ask questions and you do a really good job narrating all the productions. And here's this, my drama teacher telling me, and I'm like, why don't you cast me as an actress? Can't I act? But he's like, eh, you're better narrating. I don't know if that was good <laughs> or bad, but, but he, he said that I could narrate a story. I could tell a story, the inflection, the tone, the intonation, and I could engage people. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll go into broadcasting. And that was honestly a junior in high school, the first time I ever thought of it. In all the stories that you've reported on, uh, do you remember any that have been particularly inspiring to you? I think stories connect us, Kirk, and, and stories make us feel like we're not alone. And a powerful story is when it not only inspires, but you can find yourself in that story. And I think yes. that's what really good journalism does. And that's a story for another day. <laughs> what good journalism is and what bad journalism is. Yeah. We could talk about that maybe on your on another edition. Well, I, th I think that that is but, one of the th great things that we love about watching stories being told is you say, I feel like that guy. That's the situation yes. that I feel like I'm in or I need to make that decision and that change in my life. And you identify with mm -hmm. those characters. Man, that's, that's right. just very, it's, it's, it's just kind of magical. It's powerful, but what that takes, but what that takes too is a vulnerability on, on, on his part, right? So I, I just look back and, you know, I've, I've been in broadcasting for 20 years and I've worked in local affiliates. I've worked at the network and I, I'll never, I'll never get over the opportunity to tell people's stories. And I think what, it's a lost art in journalism. We shouldn't be the story as a journalist and it's unfortunate that in this new breed of journalists and reporters that so often we want to be the story instead of just producing the story and delivering the story, delivering the story of inspiration, delivering the story of hope, delivering story that people can connect with. Um, but it, it's hard to just put my finger on just one because I feel like collectively 
Um, I've been touched by so many of them, and it's just such a great honor and a responsibility. I recently launched a podcast. It's called the Paula Ferris Faith and Calling Podcast, and, and it is such a privilege to tell these stories of what people are called to do, who they're called to be. It's, mm. it's something that I'm super passionate about is that we don't have to do one thing for the rest of our life. God can call us to different things in different seasons. And I, I just love giving people a microphone to tell their story of inspiration um, in an empowering and encouraging way. Um, I like there to be takeaways just like you do, right? You wanna give people um, something to, to, to feed on and something to take away. Um, you sound a little bit like a journalist, Kirk, because that's do what I? we do in journalism. We, we, we want a takeaway at the end. We want a takeaway. Right? We, we want right. a takeaway, absolutely. Well, I, I love that you're talking about your own life. You talked about this transition. You're, you just moved. You, you're kind of in, a, in a, you're doing a podcast now. Um, sometimes the very best stories have these crazy like plot twists. And 100%. those are always the best stories, right? Like, like, like where would the story be without it seeming like Frodo is gonna, gonna just <laughs> lose it and he can't make it up to the mountain and, and destroy right. the ring? Right, like, like right. With, without that kind of tension, it's not really a very good story. And it's, it's called the story arc, right? Yeah. There's the arc of the story, and, and there's gotta be conflict and tension. So if God's writing a story through mm -hmm. your life and through my life and through everybody's life, maybe we should embrace these transitions and these plot 100%. twists and these things that seem to be like curveballs out of nowhere. Why did that happen? That's not according to the plans that I had for my life. Maybe God is writing something that's far better than what you were planning on writing. What do you think of that whole right, idea? That, it's so true, but um, you know, now we see through a glass dimly and then we'll see face to face. We often think of things through our own humanity and we're like, God, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm sure this is gonna be a great chapter yeah. in our story. And I look back at those pain points in life, uh, Kirk, mm. those, those points of pain, the, the points of struggle, the great tragedies, and often, um, God allows those moments to happen to really put us on the path that we need to, to, to allow us to enter the next chapter that we need to enter. And so right. often when God asks you to do something, he's like, I, you have that peace in your spirit, you're supposed to do it. And you're like, eh, let me look at the next chapter. Just, just give me a peek and then that'll determine if I'm going to go in that direction or not. That's not how it works with God. And it's a beautiful, I, I like the the theme of storytelling within this because our lives, as you said, are stories. And there are chapters that we really love, chapters that are really difficult, chapters we probably want to burn and never show to anyone else again. But it's, it is, it is symbolic of a journey. And um, I, I just think God is the great author and finisher of our faith. He's the great author and finisher of our journey too, mm. of our book, of our chapters. And he so often asks us and calls us to do things that are very scary, yeah. um, but things that in hindsight are gonna write the best stories. You know, in 2018, I pumped the brakes at the height of my career. That's when I left The View. That's when I stepped away from Good Morning America anchoring Weekend Edition. And I stepped into a much less prestigious role. But what happened last year, um, ABC didn't renew my contract. And that was a huge blow. That was a pain point for me. I wasn't ready for that. But what it did is it set our family on this path that we didn't know that we needed. It's, it's, it's not what we wanted, but it was absolutely what we needed. So God tells us to stay, to trust him. It's scary. We decide, okay, God, we're gonna trust you, even though it doesn't yep. make sense. This chapter, I don't know where you're going with this chapter, God. But looking back on it, it's been one of the most beautiful chapters of our life. And yes, it included fear yep. and it included a peace in our spirit. It included a lot of pain, heartache, ego. Um, it involved uh, lack of closure. I was never able to go back and clean out my office from ABC because of the pandemic. I never went back to clean out my house. My husband went back to, to, to move it. Like we, we left New York thinking we'd be gone two weeks and had no closure and had no idea what this next chapter was gonna look like. But it's been one of the most beautiful chapters that God's ever written in our life. We just yeah. had to step out and obey. Let, let me ask you this yep. question, um, Paula, just, uh, and this is 
and then we're gonna go to a break. I saw a movie once called The Giver, and it was based on a book, and it just stayed in my mind because it was this story about this society of people that seemed to be happy, but everybody was the same. You dressed the same, you were told what to do for a living, um, and, and it was like, Weather was controlled, choices were controlled, emotions were controlled, and everything was done uh, by an elite group of people that governed the community and nobody could ever leave the community because that's where you would be happy and everything else was bad. And I thought to myself, wow, that is what's telling me why freedom is so important because if you get Free into will. a society where people control all of the factors to keep you safe and happy, so to speak, um, that really eliminates joy. It eliminates even the bad things like anger and war and those kinds of things, but it eliminates love and it eliminates uh, the pain points that produce character. And I thought, wow, a story can tell me that sometimes more, more poignantly than just uh, facts on a fact sheet. Right, right, right. Or, or, or that kind of thing. What do you think it is about story that is so much more powerful than facts? Well, story is real life played out. Facts look like one thing on paper. It's like you can look at a survey, you can look at statistics. Um, those numbers don't lie, but they don't tell the story. Right. And the story is what's behind it. And the story is where there's power. Just like just like what you what you just relayed from the movie The Giver, the anecdote from that. And you look at that, and you're like, wow, what a good parallel, what a great analogy anecdote to um, not only society, not only how important all of those pain points are in a story, but also um, the love of a heavenly father who gave us free will who gave us the option to choose good and evil. Without our bad days, we don't know what a good day feels like, right? I love that saying. I saw it on one of the churches down here. And, and I every time I'm having a bad day, I just think without my bad days, I would not appreciate my good days. Yeah. Um, and and also our story, it's it's not over, but we know the ultimate story God's already written that. And so that gives me great peace that no matter how much pain I endure or you endure in your own life and how much tragedy, how much sorrow, how many good days and bad days, we know that, yes, like you said, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. But we also know who controls the chessboard and we know the final move. We know the end of that story. And that's what I take great comfort in. Let's talk about how people who are watching, people who aren't professional storytellers, uh, people who aren't journalists, how they can find their voice, so to speak, by uh, embracing the story that God is already, already writing for them in their own life and then using that story to impact the world. Well, I, I think we, we all get caught up in that trap of comparison, no matter where we are in life, right? Um, you know, I look at my own life and I'm like, there's honestly nothing special about me. I grew up in a small town in Jackson, Michigan. Um, I went to a small Christian college, uh, married my college sweetheart. Um, I did some, I did something cool vocationally for a while, but like there's nothing super special about me. And I think so often we diminish our own story in our own mind and that's where it has to stop. Um, I did an, a recent interview with Pastor Louis Giglio. You're familiar with, with Pastor Giglio. And this is something that has really helped me, and I hope it helps anybody that is is listening and watching right now, is how uniquely created each and every one of us is created to be. There's only one you. We're each made up of three billion uh, characters in our DNA. And if you were to stretch that across, if you were to read one character per minute, it would take something like 96 years. And there's only one DNA code for you. God has a unique purpose and a unique plan for you. Don't diminish your story. There's only one you. Of all the DNA codes, of all the numbers, there's only one that matches your description. And just like a body, um, you look at your own body. Yes, my hands might do a lot of work because I talk with my hands a lot. But with 
without the joints and without the elbow and without the shoulder, we are all comprised of one body and we each have a role. Some of those roles might be a little more front and center. Some of them may be hidden, right? But there is significance and importance in each and every role and just embracing that. Don't diminish your story. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were uh, knit together in your mother's womb. You're made in the image of God and there's only one you and he has a precise purpose and plan for you, but it starts with you not diminishing your story and then embracing how unique and how special you were created to be. Yeah, so, I, and I, I'll be honest, I've, I've struggled at times thinking like, oh man, like, you know, are my best days behind me? Are, 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 are the exciting things that I've done uh, in my rear view mirror? And what am I gonna do to keep my life exciting into the future? And, and yet, when I read stories like we just talked about in the Bible, and, and, I, and I remember one person one time uh, sort of explained what they saw in my life that was totally different from what I had seen. And it gave mm -hmm. me new hope because they just crafted a narrative about my life totally. in a way that I wasn't looking at it. And I think, right. I think that it's just so important for us to do that. And I would encourage people, um, you know, if you were writing a story about your own life, like really, like if you were gonna write a book or like a short story about your own life, <sighs> you know, he grew up here, she, she uh, had this many siblings, you know, I think looking at life as a narrative story is really That's exciting right. and then realize that you're just in one of the middle chapters right now. And, and some totally. of the very uh, most exciting and pivotal important chapters are still going to be written even though you don't know what they are, but have faith in the author. Right. Make friends with the author and together with him, you get to write the rest of the story through the choices that you make. That's pretty exciting it's, stuff. It's, it's it's really exciting and it's it comes down to like seeing yourself seeing your life in chapters seeing your vocation in chapters we're called to to do different things in different seasons mm. you know and while i might just be in the middle of my book i hope so i hope there's more chapters to come yeah. um but my mother is 81 years old kirk and she we lost my father a couple of years ago and i remember after um my dad passed she said i don't really know who I am anymore. She'd lost so much of her identity mm. in, in just being a wife and losing so much of who she was in that, and she didn't know who she was. Um, fast forward a couple of years, my mother had a, had a stroke a couple of months ago, and thank God, um, she's doing really well. She's had to relearn how to, how to read, how to write, how to tell time. She has more joy, I'm telling you right now, than I have ever seen in my mother's life. And she says, Paula, I'm 81 and I'm not nearly done. God is not done writing my story. Yeah. I still feel like he is calling me to new things. He's calling me to be a joy. He's given me a second chance so that I can share people, share with people the love of Jesus so that I can encourage people in this new yeah. season. And I just think it's such a beautiful description. She's like, as long as I got life, as long as I'm breathing, God's not done with me. Me yet I'm 81 and not nearly done and I think we just embrace that that we're gonna have different touch points and be, we're gonna be called to different things in our life yeah. right what would you say to the people who realize that a big a big change is happening in their life either because of something like a stroke a health issue like that or maybe it's a professional sure. career change like you've yep. experienced and they say wait a minute okay um, this, my life's going in a different direction right now. And they want to find God's will for their life. And they're thinking, I just don't know. Yes. I don't know what to do. Maybe, maybe the, the lockdowns uh, over these last couple of years have taken away all of the things that they've been leaning on. Mm -hmm. How did you make this change from what you were doing to what you're doing now and really embracing it, owning it and saying, you know, yeah. this, is, this is great. Can you give any, any advice for those of us who are thinking 100%, about this thing? hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, I'm in that season of change and that season of resetting and yeah. season of, God, what's going on here? But I think the first thing is change is normal and change is going is bound to happen in our life. Um, the other thing is like is fear is normal. So often we're scared to make a change because of because because we're scared of what's possibly on the other side. Maybe it's the unknown. But one thing that's given me great comfort, Kirk, is uh, Joshua 1.9, when, when God called Joshua to take down the cities of Jericho, he says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged for the Lord your God's with you everywhere you go. And I just really clung to that to that verse, have I not commanded you? So yes, change is going to happen and, and we can have a peace in our spirit that maybe we're supposed to go in this direction, um, 
but we can still feel fear along the way. And God recognizes that we're going to feel fear. He promises he'll be there, but he says, have I not commanded you? Um, and, and realize along the way, like your failure's normal too. Like how many, you, you have to fail. Michael Jordan said the key to success is failure, right? So change is normal. Fear is normal. Uh, failure is normal. Um, and I, I just think it's, we, we're so hard on ourselves and we think that we have to make the, the, the exact right move. And what is God's will for my life? And you know what? God wants us to move. God is commanding us to move. If you have a peace in your spirit that God wants you to pursue something, it doesn't have to make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. When God calls you, he will equip you. But you have to start moving have i not commanded you to be strong and courageous it's like you program mm. in your gps i'm going to take inside your car i i can't find my way around a paper bag okay i'm always programming the directions into my gps but i i, I want you to pretend like you're in a car right now you programmed the directions in and you know right at the the genesis of 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 the journey it's like, I can't recognize where you are, Kirk. So you're like, uh, it's like got that that blue arrow and it's circling. Like, do I go left or do I go right? right? Like it's right. spinning. It's, sort of it's like, itself. I don't know if I'm supposed to, yes, but guess what? You have to start moving. And when you start moving, then you realize, oh, I took a wrong turn. I got to reroute, I got to turn around. Or I just started driving in the right direction and I'm on my way to my destination. But you don't figure that out until you start moving. And we mm. often really, I'm going to wait on God. And yes, like wait on God, can have a peace about it, but know that you're the one that has to do the work. You have to step out in faith. You got to step onto that staircase, even though you, that one step, even though you can't see the rest of the staircase, that's what God's calling us to do. He says, you're going to experience fear. We'll never conquer our fears. We just get to press into it right? We get mm. to press into it. And that's when God really starts revealing himself to you is when you step out in faith and you, you say, you know what? I'm just going to start driving. And guess what? When I start driving, then I, it's, it's everything will, will be made clear. But we often overthink it. We're like, wait, God. but God needs us to take that step. And then he promises us that he's going to be there. And, and I'm telling you, when you step out in faith, God reveals himself and and he takes care of you. And some, some of it might involve failure, but I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have been as successful as I was vocationally in broadcasting had I not failed and fallen on my face. And I've learned more from those failures than I have from virtually anything else in life. You know, success, the key to success is truly failure. You learn so much from it. So, um, yeah, change is normal. Fear is normal. Failure is normal. It truly is. 